And I just stood there in three feet of sewage water as my shit was like floating by me, getting ruined. And I just stared into the eye of my boyfriend's ex-girlfriend's butthole. Welcome to This Is Not Happening. I'm your host, Roy Wood Jr. Ooh, nice tea. Boys have a good time. Night's episode, it's all about romance. The podcast is called Guys We Fuck, Christina Hutchinson! So, uh, three years ago, my comedy partner, Corinne Fisher, and I, we started Guys We Fuck, the anti-slut shimming podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and we started out, we started out interviewing a guy that one of us is fucked. And uh, in an attempt to kind of learn more about ourselves and, uh, you know, help maybe shed the shame that some people carry uh, on their shoulders about their own sexuality. And, uh, and we kind of each went into the podcast having a person in our lives that caused us a lot of emotional turmoil. Uh, for Corinne, it was her ex-boyfriend who dumped her out of the blue and left her heartbroken. Uh, for me, it was a famous porn star named Stoya <laughs> who dated my boyfriend for two years right before I started dating him. <laughs> ah, comedy gold. Uh, <laughs> but she's not what you think of when you, people like, think of a typical porn star. Like, this girl is stunning. Like, she has the face of Megan Fox and the body of Megan Fox. <laughs> And then every once in a while, she'll publish this think piece about sexuality or feminism. They'll make you go, wow, that's brilliant. And, <laughs> you know, and, and when I first met Steven, they, they were dating. It was on the set of a music video that he was directing. And uh, I remember we were, we were on set one day, and he, he's like, yeah, my, my girlfriend's a famous porn star named Soya. And I was like, oh, word? <laughs> tell me everything. <laughs> And I just egged him on to tell me all these stories about their sex life, and it was fascinating. And a year later, she dumps him, leaves him heartbroken. Seven days after that, I start dating him. <laughs> and I gotta say, if, if anybody in here ever has the opportunity to see their significant others, very attractive, very good at sex, uh, ex-girlfriend, do a hardcore anal scene with a coke can dick online, uh, <laughs> Take advantage of that situation. It's gonna put you in a weird place for a couple of years, uh, turns out. Yeah, then you're gonna do a podcast where you interview every guy you've ever slept with because you feel femasculated. That's what happens when that happens. Yeah, that's not a real word. Uh, that's, there's no word in the English language that is the female equivalent of emasculated, which is fucking insane to me because that is the only way I could begin to describe how it feels to immediately follow a girl who, as part of her job, she'll just walk on stage, stage exactly like this, uh, <laughs> in front of a group of strangers, right? She'll just take off all her clothes and come everywhere. And then everyone's like, this is the best day of my life. I'll never forget this. <laughs> but then for my job, I walk on stage in front of a group of strangers, fully clothed the whole time. And then I'm just like, hey, does anybody want to hear a riddle? Or, you know, <laughs> you guys want to... You want to hear a riddle? What do you do, you teach her? Oh, you're gonna jerk off to that girl's vagina? Okay, that's fine, no problem. I'll keep my riddle right here. Come to me when you're done. Get it, come, I don't know, whatever. It was hard. It was hard because he was still telling me all these things that I didn't want to hear. Like the, one of the worst things he told me when we started dating was, he said, sometimes Stoya, he, she would take my hand and put it up her skirt to let me know how wet I made her in public. And I was like, oh, God. Do I got to do that? Or... I don't think I can do that. And I started to notice things. Like I started to notice that every porn store in New York City, they all have the same poster hanging on the front of their door. And it's just all these chicks, like hot chicks with like pirate outfits on. One of them had an eye patch, but she somehow like made it hot. It was very confusing. And then one of the women on the poster was Stoya. 
And then she would just stare at me as I walked by, like, my pussy's better than yours, huh? <laughs> and I have an acting credit, so fuck you. <laughs> a couple months in, I was dating. I, I was at his apartment in Brooklyn, where she used to live. They broke up, she moved out. And I went to change his sheets, because it had been a while. And, and I removed the fitted sheet off of his bed, and I noticed this large puddle stain on his mattress. And I was like, Hey, Steven, can you come here real quick? What? Did you spill a gallon of iced tea on your bed? What the fuck is that? <laughs> and he's like, oh, uh, <laughs> Stoya, when she has an orgasm, she just squirts everywhere and, you know, oh, she does? Oh, that's great. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> hey, would you be a dear? Get a new mattress pad, please? Thank you. When I first went into his apartment, I noticed at the top of his closet in his room, he had, he had all these boxes on the top of his shelf and they had a naked lady on them. And for the longest time, I was like, I don't want to know. But then after the jizz sheet thing, I was like, eh, maybe I want to know. <laughs> and I took a closer look and I noticed that that naked lady was Stoya. And I was like, hmm, Steven, question, quick question. Uh, what the fuck are those? And he was like, oh, ugh. those are Stoya's fleshlights. She forgot to take them before she moved out. I'm like, I'm sorry, what's a flashlight? Uh, if you don't know, you know. Uh, <laughs> you look like you have a couple. Um, if you don't know, a flashlight is a sex toy for a guy, okay? It looks like a giant plastic flashlight. You unscrew the cap, and it's a pussy that you stick your penis in, <laughs> or butthole, or mouth. Uh, and, and all the big porn stars have a line of flashlights that are molded off of their actual buttholes and vaginas and mouths. And he had 12 of them up there on the shelf. <laughs> I was like, I don't think you need any of those, right? Isn't that like the etiquette? Like, you move on from one girl to a new girl, right? You, you throw the old girl's vagina in the trash. <laughs> That's like the nice thing to do, right? It's like, it's like polite, it's like manners. And he's like, oh, sorry, I throw them out. Thank you, uh, you know. <laughs> Very shortly after that, uh, Stoya's face appeared on the cover of the Village Voice, which is a free newspaper in New York City. It's on every street corner in a little plastic kiosk. Her face was on the cover and the headline read, the prettiest girl in New York is a porn star. <laughs> and it was on every fucking corner. And it, like my life, there was a point where my life just became this horrible nightmare funhouse. And instead of, when I looked in the mirror, instead of like seeing like a 300 pound version of myself staring back at me, it was just, it was just Stoya. <laughs> like I would wake up in his bed in a pile of her stale jizz. I'm like, all right, that's fine, no, whatever. Just brush it off, it was bad, it's the past. And, and then I would go to get dressed and I'm just staring at a shelf of her best-selling orifices. And I'm like, all right, cool. I'm gonna go out and get a walk, uh, go for fresh air and, uh, and then I would walk outside and there she was hanging on the front of a porn store with a fucking pirate outfit on, like, huh, I'm better at sex than you, whatever, uh, acting credit. And then I would literally walk 10 feet to any corner and then there she was again, like, and I'm prettier than you. So. <laughs> and, and this whole time I was building her up in my head to be this huge bully who was tormenting me. And, and sometimes I would respond back out loud and I'd be like, you're not better than me, you're not prettier than me. <laughs> No, you're a fucking whore. You're just a fucking sex worker. That's what you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a couple times where I debated, like, maybe I should just end it and escape this shit and never talk to him again, and I wouldn't feel this way. But, but I couldn't because as bad as that was, it didn't compare to how good it felt to hold Steven's hand or to sit across from him at dinner. So I couldn't. And, uh, and I decided, you know what? I gotta change my strategy. I gotta, ch I gotta change what I'm doing here. And, and I took a long, hard look at all of my insecurities and I scooped them up and I shoved them deep down into a dark <laughs> hole. And I'm like, I know what I gotta do. I gotta one-up this bitch. <laughs> Don't ever try to one-up a porn star. Uh, <laughs> it's not gonna work out well. The first time that I went to the ER for a sex injury was... <laughs> Christmas of 2012. It was our first Christmas together. I was so excited. He got me the most amazing gifts. He got me this beautiful vintage coat and, and I'm obsessed with popcorn. I eat it every day. And he got me this giant suitcase and I opened it and it was filled with 30 boxes of popcorn. I was like, oh my God, you know me so well. 
<laughs> and then his parents left the room and he gave me another gift and I unwrapped it and it was the biggest dildo <laughs> that I have ever seen in my entire life. Didn't even know they made him that big. And, and you know, I had been bragging to him all this whole time about sexual things that I didn't do, but I said I did them. <laughs> and so out loud, I was like, oh, yeah, this is, this is a good size, yeah. It's great. But inside, I was like, that's not gonna fit in there. I don't think I can fit that in my mouth. Uh, but I was really trying to keep this ruse up, so I was like, we should use it tonight. Um, so we go back to his apartment in Brooklyn, and before I go in the bed, I go, I go in his bathroom, and I look in the mirror, and I give myself a little pep talk. I'm like, Christina, women have been pushing babies out of their vaginas since the beginning of time. Okay, you were born, you were born for this shit, okay? You're gonna go in there, you're gonna take that dildo like a grown-ass woman, and you're not gonna let him see you cry. <laughs> and then I burst into the bedroom like, where is it? Ah, oh, I can't wait, so excited, so wet. Uh, <laughs> and I purposely positioned myself so that he was behind me and he couldn't see me go like, <laughs> he's got acting credit now, bitch. Uh, <laughs> And the whole time I was like, ooh, all right, this is new, but uh, maybe this is what I'm supposed to love. We had sex and we went to bed and it was okay. Uh, but then in the middle of the night, I woke up with excruciating pain in my, my lower abdomen. And I woke Steven up, I was like, Steven, I don't know what the fuck's happening, but we need to go to the ER. I don't know what's going on. We get there and there was no gynecologist on site. And so they had to get this very reluctant old male doctor to stick his fingers up me and give me an exam. And, and I was crying because it, it hurt. I was in so much pain, but it also felt kind of rapey. Like, <laughs> like, I didn't want him to do it. He didn't want to do it. <laughs> but it kind of had to get done. And I was whole, Stephen was squeezing my hand really tight and I looked up at him and he had a tear rolling down his face and he was, in, he was so sad that I was in so much pain. And it was this weird, connected, beautiful moment. And, <laughs> And the doctor was like, oh, you've had two cysts on your ovaries burst. And right as I was about to say, I took a bigger dildo than I could have handled, doc. I'm sorry. <laughs> he cut me off. He's like, oh, this happens to a lot of women and sometimes it happens out of nowhere. I'm like, oh, God, thank God. Praise the <laughs> Lord. Okay, good. <laughs> cool. And then the second time I went to the ER for a sex injury, um, uh, it was from butt stuff gone awry. Um, <laughs> I was just pretending to love anal and there was a lot of bleeding involved and I wish I could say I learned some beautiful lesson uh, from that story but it's just I had to eat more fiber that was all that was <laughs> yeah that's all I was but uh but shortly after that we moved in together and I never lived with a boyfriend before I was so excited and uh about six months into us living together Hurricane Sandy hits New York City and our apartment is uh situated in a flood A zone and if you don't know, that is the floodiest zone. <laughs> that is the get the fuck out of here zone. Uh, but we stayed. We're like, ah, hurricane, schmurricane, whatever. And uh, our apartment is a duplex. The bottom level is in the basement of the building. And when Hurricane Sandy was at its peak, that basement level ended up flooding with three feet of sewage water, which I didn't even know was possible. And it came up from the toilet and the tub and the sink. The lights were flickering on and off. I was like, holy shit, this is Armageddon. And, uh, and all of our shit was getting ruined downstairs. So we were running everything upstairs as fast as we could. And I go in the closet of his office. I go to grab a box. I'm like, oh my God, a flashlight, perfect. And I grab it. I grab it, I couldn't really see. And I unscrew the cap. And and I was like, oh, word. <laughs> there was no light bulb. Um, and I just stood there in three feet of sewage water as my shit was like floating by me, getting ruined. And I just stared into the eye of my boyfriend's ex-girlfriend's butthole. <laughs> and all those insecurities that I had shoved deep, deep down in that fucking hole came bubbling right back up and I, I ran upstairs with her butthole in my left hand and I fucking let him have it. I screamed at him. Everything that I'd ever felt about her came out onto him. I wouldn't even let him talk. And I was like, you said you would throw these away. You told me you would throw these away. And he goes, I, 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 I did. I threw them away. I kept one because I thought it was funny. It's like, how often do you date somebody with a best-selling butthole? <laughs> But that's when I knew, oh, 
you're over her. I'm not. And, uh, and I still really, it had been four years since I've been feeling that way and I wanted so desperately to get rid of it. And we had been debating interviewing her on my podcast for a long time and, and he would always go, are you sure? And then I would say some sideways comment about her or something shitty and he would go, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna put her in that position. But that night I was like, oh, we're interviewing her. <laughs> and, uh, and he's like, okay, I'll ask her. And the next day she said, okay. I'm like, oh, she said, okay. Okay, cool, um, that's cool, that's fine. No, I'm glad. Uh, and uh, the morning of the interview, I remember I was at the studio. I showed up an hour early, smoked a pack of cigarettes outside. I was like, she's not better than me. She's not better than me. Fuck her. She's not better than me. <laughs> and she rounded the corner, and she had this big, giant sweater on and a Fenty Starbucks cup. And she was like, hey, oh, this is the weirdest day ever, right? And I was like, oh, I love you. Oh. <laughs> Fuck. And we interviewed her. We interviewed her. And, uh, and she began to tell me all these stories about, about people in her life that that think they know her and they kind of treat her like a second class citizen because of it. Like she can't get an apartment in the city. Like nine times out of 10, the landlord will make her pay a year's worth of rent up front. So she can't get a place to stay. Uh, she has had bank accounts get shut down on her by multiple banks and so have all of her uh, porn star friends for no reason, but uh, you know, we know the reason. <laughs> and, uh, and she has men say these foul things uh, to her on the street. But one of the things that she said that really resonated with me, she goes, it feels like I'm standing on top of a pedestal inside of a garbage can. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> but I was so upset with myself because I realized, oh shit, I'm a part of the garbage can. And I hated it. And, and, but ever since that interview, everything with Steven and I, it's like, 20,000 pounds of weight lifted off of my shoulders and our relationship has been, has been amazing ever since. I can be vulnerable with him, I can be honest with him. I'm sexually explorative because I want to be. Uh, but the best takeaway that I got from interviewing her was, uh, you know, in terms of my relationship with myself and especially with my relationship with other women, I don't wanna add to the garbage. I wanna be the pedestal. Christina Hutchinson, you are.